Hello everyone, Sandra here. So in today's video, I'll be telling you seven things you should know about Sumeru. Before we get started, one quick announcement. The battle giveaway is still going on. It is going to end on September the 5th. All you have to do is go in the linked video in the link in the description below, like, comment, and subscribe there, and you're eligible for the giveaway. Now also another thing to make sure if you want to enter for the giveaway, do not pull for bow before September the 5th, because I'll not be pulling for the winner if the winner already has bow. So with that said, let's get started. So let's start with them one by one. The first one is landscape. The information comes from Leiben, who is the marvelous merchandise special NPC who is a traveling merchant. So according to Leiben, Sumeru has landscape, has both deserts and rainforests. Currently we do not know exactly how it works between the deserts and rainforests. Um, some guesses including like a climate like Egypt were closer to the river, there are rain forests and you branch out gradually it starts to go into desert. Or something like um, another possible is like a rainforest in the middle of the desert that's also another possible setup. We don't know which one it is exactly but we know that there are rainforests and deserts. Speaking of climate, the next thing we'll talk about is Sumeru's clothing style. Uh, they took heavy inspiration from the Arabic and Middle Eastern clothing style by think they made a slightly lighter. So here are the two clothing styles for male and female respectively. It's going to be on some variation of this. If you want to see it for yourself, there is a Sumeru male person outside the Venti statue at Mondstadt Square. You can find a person there. He'll actually also give you a book if you talk to him for the first time. Uh, for the female member, there is a scholar just outside the TP points of Wanshu Inn. If if you teleport there, you can find, um, and she is from Sumeru, so that's their closing style. The third one, let's talk about their Archon. So the current Dendro, Dendro Archon is the youngest among the seven. He is a male, and he is also the god of wisdom. Uh, of course, Archons do not technically have gender, so uh, his alias is a male, if that makes sense. So he is the god of wisdom. The previous Dendro Archon is not the god of wisdom. The previous Dendro Archon is god of the woods. The current Dendro Archon came into power around 500 years ago. Ago after the fall of Conria, the old Dendro Archon died during the uh, battle with Conria, so as a result, the new Dendro Archon came into power. And because Conria only happened 500 years ago, so the new Dendro Archon is technically only around 500 years old. Now next, let's go over the Academia, which is the most important organization in all of Sumeru. So the Academia is basically the highest academical organization in all of Tevat. It is basically equivalent of like a giant university. So imagine Tevat only having one university, and this university is also in charge of almost all of Tavat's research institution. Of course, other than like specific researchers like Albedo, who is based off Mondstadt, uh, the vast majority of research is done in Sumeru, and the focus of research is on history and alchemy primarily. Uh, on top of that, Sumeru will, the academia accepts students from all over Tavat. You basically can just enroll in for free as long as you can pass. Uh, the exams and the um, graduation is very hard, and normally it's very common for people to become graduated past 30 years old. Um, generally, it is very hard there, but on top of that, uh, they allow students from all over Tavat to go there, and they will also send students all over Tavat to do their research. So it's sort of, as I've said before, like a university plus a research institute. So imagine the only place that offers you your bachelor's, your master's, and your PhD are the only place in Tavat, basically that. Some notable alumni, first of all, of course, Lisa. Lisa was extremely smart, graduated in two years, which normally takes people like tens of years to do, like over tens of years to do, she did it in two years. She is considered the best student that uh, academia had to offer in 200 years. And uh, the reason she came into her current um, characteristics right now is because while she was studying there, she really learned the price to pay to actually achieve knowledge. And she was sort of very tired and disgusted of the idea that in order to achieve the knowledge level that she wanted to, she would have to work day and night in and out like all the scholars in academia, basically having no life at all. And instead, she decided that she's going to start slacking off and take breaks whenever she can, which has resulted in her current mood uh, and behaviors. Basically, she takes breaks whenever she can. 
Japan. The two other notable graduates, one of them is Dr. Ray. Now, of course, we don't know exactly if he graduated. He actually got kicked out of the academia while proposing to experiment on humans because to him, humans are considered more advanced machinery. So if you can take apart a robot, advance it and build it back together, that's his idea with humans. But um, everyone in academia did not agree with him, especially the professors working uh he is working for so as a result he was expelled or kicked out now of course the third one is the crimson witch of flames she studied there around 500 years ago she left Mondstadt um, slightly before the fall of Conria, and then she went to study at Sumeru. Uh, Sumeru was not affected by the fall of Conria, of course, other than the death of the Dendro Archon, uh, because Conria is closer to Mondstadt. So when the monsters of Conria broke the walls and went into Mondstadt, uh, Venti was not really in response at that point for some reason. So the Knights of Femonius was the primary one to respond because Venti was sent directly into Conria. So as a result, um, her lover died during this incident and uh, the Crimson Witch of Flames kind of got mad and uh, blamed all of this on Barbados, so which, is the, uh, which is what happened later. Uh, not gonna spoil it, but uh, after this next patch, you guys will know who I'm talking about. So finally, moving on to the fourth most important thing, Sumer's major festival. The festival is called the Sabzarus. Sorry for the pronunciation. I do not know how to pronounce these things. It is equivalent to like uh, lantern rite in Lyre and like um, wind bloom in Mondstadt. It's basically the annual major festival of Sumeru. Uh, the Chinese translation directly translates to the flower archon's birthday, i.e. meaning the birth of the new uh, archon, which the new archon, the new Dendro archon, the current one, has the title the Lesser Lord Kusanani. Kusanani, yes, and um, that is his official title, similar to the case that Morax can be called Rex Lapis and Bao can be called Raiden Shogun. That is his official um, st title, and uh, we do not know his alias and we do not know his official name at the moment. So all of the information regarding this festival comes from Said from a uh, Said from um, the Mondstadt Favonius Library during the Windbloom Festival. And another piece of information with this comes from Vahid, who is in the Rito village. If you go into Rito village, go directly into the main market. He is the one closer to the end of the market to the left. He sells fertilizers um, and uh, as the nation of Denjo, Sumeru is very specialized in fertilizing and planting and uh, his fertilizer is called Anahatin uh, Blessing which is like uh, what fertilizer is generally referred to in Sumeru and um, that is what they do. So another note on the fertilizer, they are very advanced in that and sometimes you can actually get a daily commission from him where he tells you to go to talk to the old couple in Konda to ask about the fertilizer because he sold it to them earlier. So that is also a daily commission you can get from um, him quite a, uh, quite a few times I've gotten it. Two more quick things to cover. The first one is astrology. Now, astrology or reading the stars is a huge part of Sumeru's culture, according to Paima. I don't know why Paima knows this, but according to Paima, reading the stars is a common practice and skill for the people of Sumeru. And finally, regarding security, this is more of a funny thing than an actual useful thing. So for security, according to um, one of the NPCs from Lue, Sumeru's warehouses are actually made out of straws, but given that they are the best in terms of alchemy and uh, research, so it probably makes sense that, that they are using some form of magic to keep the warehouses safe instead of actually just using straws for physical strength only. So that these are the seven things you need to know about Sumeru, so hopefully that gives you guys an idea on uh, what is going on with Sumeru. Now that's all I have for you today, thank you very much for watching, if you like the content, please consider subscribing, thank you and have a nice day.